breaking news is just coming into our newsroom this morning. The White House Communications Director Mike Dubke is resigning. He was just hired, if you remember, back in March. Officials in Washington dealing with speculation about a possible shakeup with White House staff at the moment, but so far no word on any other changes that could be coming. 909 professional golfer Tiger Woods arrested and charged with driving under the influence. You probably saw his mugshot. It was trending all over social media. The golfer has been struggling to come back after several injuries. He had multiple back surgeries, but he released a statement said this had nothing to do with alcohol. He said it was a mixture of medication that he was taking and he did not realize how adversely those medications would affect him. This is the Hard story that everybody is going to be talking about today. Professional baseball player Bryce Harper hit by a 98 mile per hour fastball. Let's take this video full. After he was hit, throws his helmet uh -oh. and then throws a punch at the pitcher. Wow. A few punches. It led to an all out bench clearing brawl. The whole team took part. The pitcher and Harper were both ejected. They were thrown out because of this. But the Nationals, Harper's team won. They won this game three to nothing. But before he got pulled back by his teammates, he landed a, a pretty hard punch. But he said no one. I mean, if someone throws a 98 mile per hour fastball at me, I'm out. Well, I'm I don't know that I, I would have any. I'm going to the hospital. I'm going home. Yeah. I'm, go I'm going to the hospital Absolutely. after that. Okay, 910. You know, each state is known for something, and now a new list is just out is showing what each state is best at. And right here in Oklahoma, uh, it's our man made lakes, actually. We have the most man made lakes of any state, and our friends to the south down in Texas, uh, they're best at uh, wind energy, it turns out. So the more that you know there. It changes to health care in the United States. With President Trump's proposal to cut $800 billion to Medicaid funding over the course of the next 10 years, millions of Americans could lose their eligibility. So what does Trump care mean for Oklahomans? Coming up next, we are sitting down with the president of the Oklahoma State Medical Association. Stick with us. Yeah, and I was just talking about that earthquake, too. Uh, 3.8 uh, coming in not too far away from uh, Perry, Oklahoma. There, uh, northern Oklahoma, just a little bit. You probably felt that in Enid. Uh, so it was an earthquake. 8.57 this morning was the time on that. And so today going to be in the 70s, then eventually the 80s, tracking some rain this morning, and then the rest of the week coming up. Live, local, late-breaking. This is KOCO 5 News at 9 with Abigail Ogle, Marky Martin, and meteorologist Brad Souter. Back to you now at 913, and today we are talking health care. President Trump's plan is receiving both praise and criticism, but most predominantly right now anyway, it's just raising a lot of questions, not only from members of differing political parties, but from you, our voters, and those who need health care. Are Oklahomans at risk of losing their coverage and their eligibility for things like Medicaid? That is why we turn to Dr. Uh, Kevin Taubman, the president of the Oklahoma State Medical Association. Thank you for being with us here. My pleasure. Thanks for having us. This morning, pleasure to meet you. Obviously, I want to get your personal take on you know this proposal right now. But opinions aside, you know I think when a lot of people, the average people person, hears about what's going on with health care in this proposal, it gets bogged down with a lot of political jargon, and a lot of people don't really know what's on the table right now. So if this becomes law, what does Trump care really look like as it stands now? Well, obviously, you know, it's it's not really a partisan issue, although they're making it into one. Mm -hmm. uh, the reality is Oklahoma, among several states, is heavily reliant on both federal and state subsidized uh, processes. Uh, here we call it Sooner Care or Medicaid. And if the current bill were to go through over a, approximately an eight year period, as much as a total of 23 million individuals nationwide will be without health care, let alone the fact that in the first several years here in Oklahoma alone, access to health care will diminish substantially. We have a, a huge reliance on this. Approximately 60 percent of children or newborns rely upon Medicaid services. One out of five adults in our state rely upon it. They tend to be some of the less healthy individuals. They're more vulnerable population. They deal with all of the key indicators that meet with bad outcomes, heart disease, cancers, lung disease, stroke. And these are just a few of the issues that we're concerned about that if it goes through is going to get worse. And you being the president of the Oklahoma State Medical Association, it, the largest voice of Oklahoma physicians that we have in the state, are you vehemently against Trump care at this point or is it more, you know, different portions of it you're against? I, Where do you stand I think there? Vehement, vehemently would be a strong word. I think the key here is, is that we want 
to, along with all the physicians across the country, want to have a seat at the table to discuss what the real issues are. Again, this is not an issue of Republican versus Democrat. This is simply about our citizens and our state and our country who themselves are having trouble. Um, the economy itself is a, is a very dynamic circumstance right now. And at the end of the day, although some people are doing quite well, there's an increasing proportion of that population who are not. And healthcare issues tend to be a very dominant uh, source of financial woe for them. If this bill in its current iteration went through, that's only going to get worse. The debt burden that they will face from mounting health care costs will just continue to rise. And Trump care, you know, the way I understand it, or part of it anyway, is to kind of give each individual state more flexibility to kind of create their own individual health care track. And, you know, I heard from a lot of people, you know, saying, wouldn't that be better, better than having the federal government saying this is a, here's a one size fits all plan that every state should adhere by. Wouldn't it be better for Oklahoma to decide what's best for Oklahomans as opposed to the federal government? I think in a perfect world that would be the case. I think saying that it goes back to the states is an easy way to cost shift, quite honestly. I think that when many states themselves are really hurting. Our state, for example, just at the last hour got through what would have been almost a billion dollar budget fall. If we wouldn't have been able to solve that, and even some of the, the solutions we came up with aren't perfect either, now take away those federal dollars that we count upon to help fill some of those gaps, and we're right back where we were before. And do you want to, uh, we had a lot of people chime in about this and wanted your take, and we had Zach Gray write in, and he has this, uh, for the OSMA, ask who are the winners and who are the losers if this bill is made law in its current form? I think to say who the winners are, that's a more difficult thing to really outline, because I think there are people behind the scenes who clearly will benefit, but we're not sure exactly who they are. I think the clear losers up front are the Americans themselves. I think at the end of the day that we're, we're in a real crunch where we need to continue to push forward in medical innovation. We need to continue to shore up the infrastructure of our health system, let alone what goes on in our country, and to continue to cut away at those budgetary items is only going to eventually lead to an implosion of the whole process. And just kind of, you know, a basic question here. A lot of people want health care put into layman's terms for them. Let's talk dollar signs. You know, if this were to become law, what does it cost us monthly? What do our premiums look like? I mean, how realistically, that, what that, does health care cost an that's average? That's still yet to be determined. One of the biggest criticisms that came out of Obamacare was the fact that what was supposed to be effectively a, a universal health plan for all Americans, there were a number of people who were marginalized, that their premiums were exceptionally high and they were mandated to have to be on those. And so that was maybe one of the shortcomings in the Trump care issue. Um, it's no longer about just pure premiums. It's about the fact of whether they will even have coverage whatsoever because these tax credits and other things they're talking about, I'm not so sure are going to go to, to where we the, the rhetoric is directing them. And last question for this segment. We're going to break this into to two different segments with you. But uh, the ACA had a huge impact on small to medium-sized businesses. You know, they had the mandate if you had 50 employees or more, you had to provide health care coverage. You know, I know someone specifically who had to keep the numbers at, at 48 because it was just astronomical. Um, the price of it was, wouldn't this be good for business because Trump Care does take away that mandate? Wouldn't it be great for smaller businesses, provide more jobs, help the local economy? Can, it, do, it does the if, the, if the employment of those individuals is at a level of wage that can translate to them being able to afford health care coverage in the first place. And, that, and I would agree that was a real difficult circumstance for many medium to small sized businesses. But at the same time, when the average wage of their employees would not be enough to pay for private insurance, that's an issue as well. Okay, yep, that makes sense too. Uh, well, Doctor, we're going to keep you around for one more segment. That's we good. have some more viewer questions on the other side of this break.